We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. We got to talk talk about the Ohio State Georgia game here. Now we get to answer some uh, Ask Sloopcast questions today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Let's get started. Um, I haven't looked at the questions yet, Kyle. I know we have Austin's overs, Austin's over unders, which will be uh, very Ohio State versus Georgia centric. Um, are the other questions Ohio State Georgia centric as well? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I will. For the most part, yes. Oh, right. let's so get let's, started. Let's... let's start with Austin. Um, sure. All right. We moved this so... to this show because we kind of we almost wanted to do this like a two parter. This is almost like Know Your Enemy Part Two. All right, let me pull up. Here we go. CJ Stroud, over unders, playoff edition by yours truly, Austin. CJ Stroud passing yardage, over under 297.5 yards. Uh, uh, it's... Uh, Austin, uh, Austin, did you mean 397.5 yards? <laughs> I'm smashing that over. I am smashing that over. Opponent passing yards per game allowed by Georgia sitting at 223. Um, what was the number again, Kyle? 297.5. I'm going to say over just because I think it has to be. I think it has to be if Ohio State's going to win. All right. But we saw what they did against Hendon Hooker. Um, I know Kyle points out that LSU put up the ball, uh, was able to throw the ball a ton against them. Um, that's a more recent, you know, point of evidence, but we'll see. I'm going over. Yep. All right. Uh, Brock Bowers, their, uh, their tight end catches over under five and a half. I will say Jared. He has only ever caught more than five passes once this whole season. That was the last game against LSU. He's caught five passes in a lot of games. One, two, three, four, five, six games. So if you want to count the LSU game, well, no. Six times he's caught five passes, only once more than five. So I, if I'm going to go under just because of that kind of statistic, but man, right. I, I can, I can, I can see Bowers just having like a seven, eight reception type type of game. Yeah. Especially I'll, if they're going to play go, a conservative I'm, defense, like I was advocating for on the Tuesday episode. No, or uh, yeah, no, your enemy. Yeah. All right. Uh, Georgia sex on Stroud at two and a half. By the way, I don't know if I also said it or not, but I agree with Kyle under. Okay. Uh, Georgia sex at on Stroud two and a half mentioned in our previous episode, Jared, that CJ Stroud has only been sacked eight times all yeah. year. And only one game he was sacked more than once. And that was again, that was the Penn state game. He was only sacked once against Michigan. He was only sacked once against Notre Dame. Only sacked once against Iowa. Uh, teams with um, really good defenses here. So you're saying that for Georgia to sack more than two times, I'm going under, I'll go under here. Yeah. Uh, Georgia for all of their strengths and they, and they have many is not a team that gets a ton of sacks. Nope. Um, 88th in the country. Uh, they get a fat, they get a sack 5.5% of passing plays. All right. So I agree with Kyle. I'm going under. Tommy Pickles and Steel Chamber tackles combined over under 20 and a half tackles. Uh, real quick, uh, Zach says Georgia will pick him off before they sack him. Georgia also not super strong at producing interceptions. Um, 74th in the country. Sorry, Kyle. Uh, who who was the committee? 20, who- 20 and a half tackles for Tommy Pickles uh-huh. and Steel Chambers. So pretty much your two leading tacklers for Ohio State. 
who have combined for 181 total tackles. Yeah, uh, George is a very efficient offense. You're not going to get them like off of the field like a ton. I think they're going to get a, a lot of plays. They're going to have decent. Uh, they're going to have a decent number of, of – this isn't going to be like, oh, three and out, get the ball back. Three and out, get the ball back. Like, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for tackles. Those are your tackle getters. I'm going to go over. You know, it it would seem that way, Jared. You, you would think, oh, you got your two team – you got your two players who who lead the team in, in total tackles here. But honestly, when you look at the statistics here – it was only once, twice. Right. I see twice here that they've tackled 20 or more times here. Who are but those teams? I, I agree. But I, I agree. But who um, are those, those teams? teams here, those teams here, I'm looking uh Penn State. Uh-huh. Northwestern. Mm-hmm. And? I'm looking for more than 20 because there's two games where it was right at 20. This is the only two games. Penn State okay. Northwestern, where they've more than 20 tackles combined. Okay. You know, you know, it's that kind of game. I, we, we mentioned about it that I think uh, if Ohio State's going to win this game, they need to play everything in front of them, which is going to lead to more tackles. Georgia may extend drives more than what Ohio State fans are, would like to see, which is going to create more tackle opportunities for for Steel Chambers and Tommy Pickles. So I'll, I'll go over here. I, I think I think um, both of them will see a lot of tackles. Yeah. All right, next one here is Georgia turnovers at one and a half. Uh, Georgia turnovers at one and a half? Yes. Um, that's right on the money of about what they do. Uh, they average both give and, uh, well, yeah, they're, yeah, both give and take away about 1.3. Um, uh, I'm going to go under. over just cause I want it. <laughs> and I'll go under here. Okay. Georgia rushing yards at 183.5. Georgia gets 183 rushing yards in this game. That does not bode well for, for Ohio State to win this game. Yeah, uh, they average 214 a game. Um, I think Ohio State's defense is good enough to knock about, you know, what would that be? About 30 yards off? I, I'll i go for that. Yeah, I'll go under. Yeah, I'll go under as well. They could backdoor cover it. I mean, yeah, especially with a rushing statistic. That's that is how that typically happens. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Fleming catches at twelve and a half. If he said Abuka and Marvin Harrison Jr., take yeah, that way for on that one. But Fleming and Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, looking at Fleming's. Um, recent games here or recent catches five against Michigan, two against Maryland, two against Indiana, one against Northwestern. He's only had, he's only had four games where he's caught the ball four or more times. Yeah. But you know, Marvin Harrison jr. May have 12 catches just by himself. So I'll go over. <laughs> uh, that's, that's generous, Kyle. I agree with your first statement, which had he said a Mecca, I would have gone over Ameka and Harrison, but um, with Ameka and Fleming, or excuse me, with Harrison and Fleming, I'm going to go under. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Dallin and Mayan touchdowns at two and a half. I'll go, I'll go under on that one. Yeah. I just don't, I mean, yeah, I just don't know where those are coming from. So I, I'm just going to say under. All right, uh, JT and Sawyer sacks at one and a half. Oh, Austin's I'll, here. I'll go. I'll go under. I'll go under for the total sacks there. Uh, sorry, for, say it again. Uh, for JT Tui Malau mm -hmm. and Jack Sawyer, one and a half sacks. Just, just it's under just because 
Bennett's only been sacked seven times all year. Yeah. Yeah. Under it, that, that should have been at 0.5 for JT and so if it had been total sacks, but if you're going to lock it down to two specific players, I'm going to go under. Yep. All right. Georgia plays of 50 yards or more. 50 yards or more plays, and that's two and a half plays. plays under. Has to be. Yeah. Has to be. Um, I, I'd like to think, yeah, I, I like to think that they learned their lesson in the Michigan game. Yes, agreed. I'll go under as well. All right, those, those are all the over-unders for Austin. All right. Uh, what other questions we have? All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, our good friend Nomad asks us. <laughs> and, and Austin's gone. Does this week's weather deserve airtime discussion? No. Game's being played in a dome. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, why will Kirby Smart outcoach Ryan Day? Oh. And what makes that scenario so nauseating to even think Smart outcoaches him? He won't. I don't think he will. Um, I mean, he might. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But um, <laughs> because weather. Um, I Again, you have to sort of hope that Ryan Day has taken a look at himself and, you know, taken a look at the Michigan game and what the, what went wrong. How do I, you know, I think after last year, it's, it was probably super easy for day to say the defense is garbage and get mad and fire the defensive staff. Um, I think after this loss, he has to take a look at himself and hopefully he's spent the past month doing that. Hopefully he watched the Michigan tape Hopefully he has an idea of where things went wrong. Like I said, you know, what went wrong? How do you fix it? And if he didn't do that, then Ohio State's going to lose this game. Yep. Because that's the way Ohio State wins this football game is by Ryan Day, again, watching the Michigan tape and taking it to heart. What I did, what did I do wrong in this game? And correcting it, because as Kyle and I have said all year, Georgia is a, just a better Michigan. And you lost right, to Michigan. Next question, next question here. What is the Sloop Cat endorsed method for dealing with Jalen Carter? I, I, I think I mentioned, I think. Run away. Well, no, no. The, the, the answer is what JT, JT, what CJ has been doing all year. And that's getting Run rid away. of the ball quickly. Run away. Getting, getting rid of the ball quickly. Don't, don't, <laughs> Willis McGee, don't hang on to the ball. Bitch. Don't, um, don't hold on to the ball. Run away. Throw the, get rid of the ball. Don't run. If you're running the ball, do not run at him. Um, Jalen. This is not this is not a game to try and prove how tough you are or how big you are. Um, this is a game to say Jalen Carter is a top 10 NFL draft pick and let's not run at him. Yes. All right. And what is the Sloop Cat endorsed method for dealing with Bowers? Um, I, I think you can chip him at the line to slow him down. I think you can not I don't I don't think you like lock one person on him. I think you know a lot of people are like, oh, steel chambers versus or oh it's you know pick pick your guy. Pick whoever that guy is in your mind. And probably not just them. I, I think you can vary it. I, um, I think what you have to do, and I mentioned this in the last episode, Jared. Is that you got to get at the quarterback quickly because if, if you're not going to get at him and George has done an excellent, excellent job of protecting Bennett, but you got to create pressure so that, so that 
he doesn't have time in the pocket and that the tight ends, um, I know, I know he mentioned here, uh, Bowers, but really the tight ends in general yeah, to get open again, right? They're going to get open if, if Bennett has six, eight seconds in the, in the pocket there for sure. those big tight ends to get open. You, you got to create pressure and you got to force them to throw the ball quickly. And for what it's worth, if you start getting at Bennett and you start to create a lot of pressure, maybe one of those tight ends starts staying back the block. Mm-hmm. That's true. All right. Uh, Kind of just going along with that last question here. Uh, who is Zach asks, who is the best to contain Bowers and why? Uh, the answer to that is who's the best? Uh, no one is. <laughs> I, I Bowers, think you I think you vary it. Like I don't think it always has to be the same person. Um, you know, maybe it's Hickman. Maybe it's Steel Chambers. Um m- maybe it's a combination of the two or you know the three if you're adding like McAllister in there or if you're adding Proctor in there um it I I don't I don't think you have to be like here's our one person and he's gonna follow him all over the field I don't I don't think that's necessary Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next question. After we get, oh Zach, oh Zach, what are we going to do with you? We need a, we need to create some positivity in you. He Zach says here. After we get throttled, uh huh. Will Ryan Dave he terminate immediately, or will Ohio State wait until Stop. Monday, January second? Stop. Move forward. All right. Um. If Tate doesn't call the offensive plays, does Ohio State win 56 to 28? <laughs> Who? Who? If Day doesn't call the offensive plays. Oh. Yeah. Move forward. Um, there are any more questions? Um is <laughs> Um, going back to Austin here, is college football uh-huh. a klepto, kleptocracy? Kleptocracy. Huh? The answer <laughs> is yes and yes. I don't know what you're saying, <laughs> Zach. Um, I don't know what the hell you're saying either, Austin slash Kyle. I'm, this is the part of the show where I start to feel confused. Kleptocracy? God, is this is this where I'm just being dumb? Let me Google it. <laughs> um, corrupt politician enrich themselves secretly outside of the rule of law through kickbacks, bribes, special favors. So is it is it just is it all is it all corrupt? Yes. Yes. The NCAA is uh dying and i welcome its death at least in its relationship to football but hey the at least it's not fifa at least it's not fifa i guess yeah (laughs) do you think it will uh do you think if we were in the times where we had more fourth year seniors that would have been more, there would have been more national titles over the past eight years. Um, is Are you talking specifically Ohio State or are you talking about, I mean, so if you're getting more fourth year seniors, that means you're getting less talented players. Um. And if you're asking, does that work? Ask Iowa. I mean, no, like if they had to stay for four. Okay, so not just at Ohio State. 
Like this is like if the NFL changed their rules. I don't know, like, because whatever benefit Ohio State gets from that, Bama's also getting from that. Georgia's also getting from that. All of the powerhouses are getting that same benefit. So I, yeah, I wasn't going to say them. Um, so yeah, it just, I, it, my, my first instinct is just to say that it all evens out. Who, who really gets hurt in a situation like that? Are the programs that make hay your Wisconsin's off of, hey, we don't get like the crazy recruiting classes, but we develop and we have, you know, fourth and fifth year guys. You know what I mean? That's that's why teams like that can sometimes make hay against teams with better recruiting classes because you have a bunch of, you know, two and three year guys playing a bunch of four and five year guys. Right. That's that's how that's where teams like Iowa and Wisconsin are are able to, like I said, find their success in those years where, you know, all of that talent dev sort of comes together. Um, so it would hurt those teams a lot. Quite frankly, to 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 say this short and sweet, that would actually just make the rich richer. How aggressive should we get in the transfer portal? Um, that depends upon how many scholarships that day and crew think they have. Like they have a better idea than we do right now about who's going and who's staying. Um, Ohio state has not lost a, a ton of guys this point to the transfer portal. Um, but you might see more of that. As the, you know, as the season ends for Ohio State. Um, And we also haven't seen a lot of guys declare for the NFL. Even though, like a lot of them, we like we all know CJ Stroud's going to declare. Right. Like we all know CJ Stroud's going to declare. But there's a lot of tweener guys and we we just don't know. We don't know what he does. We don't know what a lot of those guys do. Um, and the staff probably have a better idea. So we don't have. Um, so the answer to that question is highly dependent upon how many scholarships does Ohio State think they have. Uh, back to the fourth year senior question. I am just thinking if you have teams with senior Bosa's, senior Young's, senior Wilson's. I agree with you, but you also have to give Bama and Clemson and Georgia and whoever else, you have to give them their fourth year guys too. So uh, again, my, my initial and Kyle, feel free to disagree with me on this. My initial thought is that it, it all evens out for like the red blood programs in college football. For the most part, it all evens out. Um, mm-hmm. And it would end up just hurting the, the teams that's that depend tier. upon that's those second, third tier teams that depend upon development and having older players. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Kyle agrees. Uh, any other questions in the mailbag, Kyle? That's it. That's that's all the questions we got. Uh, should Brown and McCord beat up Stroud if he stays? I mean, I if if Stroud were to pull a shocker and come back, which he's not going to do, but if he does, like McCord's going to hit the portal. Yes, 100%. and 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 he should, and he should. I would support his decision to to jump in the portal. Um, but CJ Stroud's not coming back, so let's not worry about it. Yep. All right, that's that's it, Jared. That's all we have for today's episode. You got anything else? Um, no, I think I think we're good. That was short, that was sweet. Um want to encourage everyone to hop over to the Patreon page. 
Hey, I know, I know, I know y'all just spent a lot of money with it being Christmas and all that. Um, it's worth noting that Kyle and I, uh, half of our money comes from ad revenue on Spreaker and that money always goes to shit in January. Um, so if you got a little left over, if you want to throw us 32 bucks to support us for an entire year, that would be greatly appreciated. That's it. That would be greatly appreciated. It's you, you get a lot of access to stuff and I've, I've in the past episodes, I've, I've gone over all of the stuff it gives you. Um, but it also just helps Kyle and I keep stuff going. It helps us, you know, keep our computers running the software that we use, the photoshops and the premieres and all the stuff we use for to keep that comes with a monthly fee. There's a lot of monthly fees associated with everything. Um, so even if you're like, ah, Jared, I'm not going to join the discord server Ah, Jared, I don't really, I don't really care about this. And I don't really care about that. Um, maybe just help us out. Maybe just help us out. Make sure to Spread keep this profitable. Um, and yeah, if, if financially it's not going to work out, maybe just tell a friend, tell a friend to listen, uh, help us get that ad. Cause all, all ad revenue stuff, whether it be on YouTube or Spreaker or wherever people might get ad revenue from, it goes dry, terrible in January. It just, it shrivels up in January. All, all of the ad dollars are spent like in the lead up to Christmas. Then you hit January and it just goes. So <laughs> anything you can do to help us out would be appreciated. Again, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Not. Not today. It's been it's been pretty quiet in, in Buckeye land here and uh it usually is the week leading up to uh their their bowl game here. So yeah, we'll we'll catch you guys back here in the new year and hopefully be talking about another Buckeye game. Absolutely. And okay. Scenar- scen- scenario one. I hope we're I hope we're talking about Ohio State versus Michigan in the national title game. Scenario number two. I hope we're talking about Ohio State versus TCU in the national championship game. <laughs> Scenario number three. I hope we're talking about Georgia versus TCU in the national title game. And we just aren't going dis- to we aren't going to discuss option four. We're just not even going to talk about it. <laughs> it's not worth talking about. We're not going to bring it up. It doesn't exist. Um, Ohio State 85, TCU 3. There's the Zach we know. Start bribing politicians, Jared. You're doing it wrong. I don't have, I don't have bribe money. I don't have, I don't have like Walter Grumman money. I don't have Raytheon money. All right. I, 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 I don't have. Ask the foundation. They apparently don't have money either, despite the fact that it's operated by a bunch of billionaires and hundred millionaires. <sighs> let's not let's not start that, Jared. We, we'll be going on for another half hour. Let's just let's just end it right here, Jared. <laughs> Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a folk punk band called uh, Two Cow Garage. They're from the. <sighs> Sorry, I. Gangland said the dickhead and it totally derailed me. <laughs> Just print money. Thanks, gangland. Oh, I can do that. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage we're just two cow garage is the band. Folk punk. Columbus. We we end the show now. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is two cow garage.